Hi, my name's Abisola Alistair Johnston. I'm studying at the University of London to become a historian. I'm having my hair braided, because it's impossible to keep otherwise. It's a mess. You should see me when I wake up, it's all over the place. I wish I had my father's hair. White people never appreciate their luck with their hair. I knew it was going to be difficult to manage. When I was going through my notes the other day, I, f for some reason, I, I couldn't bring myself to read them. It's not that I'm lazy. It's just not my favourite chapter in history. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, there's plenty of other times when the world's been well abused, but this one... I mean, I can think of an American native Indian or the Holocaust, but I know Apache. I'm not a Jew. Does it hurt? Sometimes. Depends on your hairdresser. But I found mine. She's phenomenal. Never takes her more than two hours to come up with the most. Original styles. So cool to feel her fingers slide through my hair. Reminds me when I was a child. I loved the way my mom would plait my hair. Even though she was a real mess. Must be so bad for your self-esteem when you can't carry on the family traditions. I mean, have you ever thought of an Italian not being able to cook pasta? Or a Spaniard to dance flamenco? Or an Aussie to throw a boomerang? How could they get away with it for so long? So many people agree on such a crime. That's what's really bugging me. Why? 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 I can't think of only one reason that might help me accept it. Or at least help me understand. Sure. I didn't know what they would have changed the world forever. My dad was studying for his masters in New York. He was 24. 25. Yeah, he was 25. He told me he was totally hooked on a deli between the 23rd and Broadway. He reckons they made the best pastrami bagels in the whole world. <laughs> it was between a lecture and a bagel he met mum. She was younger, not much. She was taking some time off from studying and her parents. She was working as a au pair for a very rich family in Manhattan. She was strolling this baby around, heading towards Central Park. He was cleaning crumbs away from his jeans, and so they met. At first, my dad was feeling so guilty. He still swears he'd never messed around with a married woman before. But, of course, it wasn't my mum's baby. She was only the nanny. And so, they met. My dad worked his charm. My mum worked her. Her charm, too. <laughs> He fell in love, as simple as that. And the summer came to an end. He was due back to Scotland. My mother was spending a little longer in the States. And then she'd go home. Back to Sierra Leone. Freetown. Capital city of Sierra Leone. What a name. Free. Town. Why would anyone want to call it a town free? Free from what? Free from whom? Only reading through my notes, I found the answers to my questions. Although I was there, I mean, it was me who'd written down the notes. I couldn't remember a single word from that lecture. As if I could avoid listening to my teacher altogether and transfer his spoken word directly onto the paper. Forget about it altogether. But really, could I? Maybe. The fact that I transcribed every single word with such care, it means I wanted to remember, or at least acknowledge the fact, and choose whether or not to remember. Later. But now I know. They called it Freetown when slavery was abolished. When the unusual practice of declaring some other human beings as an animal to be traded ceased. When my father's ancestors stopped shipping my mother's ones over to the new world, crowded in a bloody ship, naked, deprived of all their things, their dignity, their identity, when my mum's ancestors 
stop betraying their own brothers and sisters, selling them to my father's ones as if they were worth less than cattle. Free town. No more slavery. Easy. My dad still feels kind of guilty. Well, because of him, my mum had to leave the sunny west coast of Africa and move to the cold, wet, rainy days of London, but she reckons it's still worth it. You should see her when she talks about my dad. Her eyes still relight. The pitch of her voice gets slightly higher. I'm, I mean, she's still in love with him after all these years. He's more reserved instead. He's a lad. When he speaks of mum, he picks his words with the tweezers. Careful, attentive, respectful. Oh, he loves her, and I love them both. They're the two different sides of me. My father's silences, my mother's pride, my dad's sense of space, my mum's warmth and kindness, my father's ability to keep things under control, my mother's fiery reaction to someone's offense, my dad's taste for fear, my mum's adoration for chili. I'm a coin, and they're my two sides. Two equal halves of a whole. What would I be without half myself? And if I had to, would I choose to be without half my mother or my father's side? How could I ever do without half my character, half my habits, half my joy, half my pain? And why? anyone want to take away what's half myself. I would then be deprived of my dignity, my identity. The half of me that was forced to stay would be nothing but a slave to the useless and fascist choice that was made. The choice of a human side over another, of a human being over another. And so they chose to set the town free. Little by little, things went back to normal. It took years, though. It takes more than a while for a scar to disappear. Even when the tissues seem to be back to normal, it still lingers. It still can be felt a strange sort of tingling feeling underneath, where the eyes can't see, where the blood runs and the two sides of an open cup try to melt together again. It still hurts, even after the stitches come off. It hurts every time you look at it, every single time you touch it. Even by chance, it just takes time. But this was a double scar, though. While things were slowly going to be the way things were, before Freetown lost its rights to be free by the hands of few. Brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, cousins, friends of those who stayed, were now experiencing the worst time of their existence. And ours, that side of the scar, couldn't find a way to melt together with the other ever again. The blood kept running for too many years. It didn't give the tissue a chance to grow back. The gap got bigger and bigger. No stitches could hold it. The two sides of the scars fell apart. They wouldn't find the way to melt together ever again. So what's left to be done when you're taken away from home? Suddenly, you feel the only way to hold the link to your family to be like your parents. My dad, for example, one day found himself smoking a pipe. My mum instead kept feeding me strictly African food or I'll end up with God knows what kind of disease. But the issue that they both kept arguing about was what I should wear at the family gathering. Dad, of course, dreamt of me wearing a kilt with a furry pouch laying on my pack. <laughs> mum loved the idea of me in a long blue dress with golden embroidery and a little hat falling on one side. I didn't like either, of course. To me, they were both skirts. What would my mates say? What would they think of me? <laughs> so I won the battle. I bought myself a pair of Dr. Martins and turned myself into a pseudo-punk. <laughs> Mum and Dad thought I was going mad at first. Then they accepted me the first generation Londoner. Yeah, Londoner. <laughs>
Many people I've met over the years seem to be, <laughs> how can I say, not so comfortable in their own skin. Always an issue with where their parents were born, how one or the other influenced them the most in their upbringing, how they were received in society, the shade of their colour, the prisoners of their hair, on and on and on. And seriously, I can't get it. I can't. Every time I hurt myself, I stop for a while and stare at my own blood flowing out of my flesh. It's red, sometimes deep, dark red, like a good border. Others, it's so fair it nearly glows. It's red. In my veins runs my father's blood. Pale, blonde, blue eyes, straight hair. Some freckles here and there. In my veins runs my mother's blood. Dark, black hair, brown eyes, curly hair and strong cheekbones. But what scares me the most is that in my own veins runs the same blood as my father's ancestors who destroyed the lives of so many Africans and the same blood as those Africans, my mum's ancestors, who sold the lives of their own brothers and sisters. What does it make of me? The bearer of the heritage of those who killed innocents? Or the one of those who simply made sure would be killed I'm a murderer, either way. Even if you took away half of my identity, I would still be a murderer. That's exactly why there's so much anger around. And consciously, all of us know we have some evil within us. And we're scared. We get anxious, start to shout, hit, kick, kill. We all walk around thinking all eyes are on us. Pure bloody paranoia. Then when you least expect it, you meet someone, you fall in love with them. All of a sudden, you realize you've been a fucking moron all your life, and eventually you've been given a chance to change. For the better. That's when you can really do something for the whole world. When you're changing history. That's why I'd like to become a historian. To witness all of those, little by little, make this world a better place. Just like my mum and dad, they did it with a little love. Me, Abisola, Alistair, Johnston.